Hi, my name is Mira Cromwell and I am a Gaia communicator and Gaia priestess. And I am so thrilled to be with my good friend, Cornelis Jan Kuperis, who is a Dutch nature mystic and wizard of uh, par excellence. And I'm so humbled to be good friends with this amazing man. I love him to bits. And Cornelis is going to talk this morning about Mananon McLear, who he is, and a mission that Mananon McLear has given Cornelis during these times of great change and the birthing of the new earth that's happening right now. So I'm going to pass this over to Cornelis. So Cornelis, please tell us a little bit about who Mananon McLear is. Okay, um, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Manana Maclear is a Celtic sea god and uh, he's mostly known in Ireland and the Isle of Man and the British uh, Isles. Um, but his reach uh, extends uh, beyond that. For instance, I live in uh, Friesland in the Netherlands and he is here very present as well. And uh, it's a very special deity to me. I work with him uh, uh, quite closely. And uh, uh, some of his gifts, some of his attributes are, for instance, uh, protection. He protects, protects the divine light uh, within you, but within all life. He's a, a sacred protector, you could say. Um, for instance, uh, the world of the elves and the nature spirits, the uh, Tuatha de Dana, who uh, also uh, uh, went... Um, um, away from our frequency, he also uh, protects them from uh, infiltration, manipulation, and so on, and so on. So, um, quick interruption though. So Friesland, for those who don't know, is on the northern coast of the Netherlands on the North Sea. And yes, also, from what you have shared with me, Mana McLear actually works all over the world. Yes. So he's probably known by other names, by other indigenous groups around the world. Very likely, yes. Okay, great. There is one other name I know of him, uh, which stems from the Scandinavian uh, traditions. And uh, in uh, those uh, cultures, uh, they refer to him as Miskot Blindy. And that's one of the giants in Nordic mythology. And uh, Miskot Blindy actually means uh, covered in mist. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, and he's really good at making himself invisible and also making other beings or places invisible to eyes who better not see uh, those places, like the island of the elves. And you have been working closely with him for a number of years, haven't you? Yes. And um, does he show himself to you? Mostly I feel him uh, and I hear his voice from time to time. He has a very... Uh, specific way of communicating. He is really clear and really uh, no-nonsense like. I really love that. Sometimes it's just yes, no, yes. <laughs> and it's like and a deep booming voice, isn't it? Yes, yes. And um, his yeses are really like 100% yes. There are no uh, subtleties or uh, maybes or uh, stuff like that involved. So no it's doubt. really clear, yes. All right, uh, and you've, you've introduced him to me. I, I love his energy. It's very, very powerful. Mm. So tell us more about what this mission is that Manon McLear has given you. Um, well, uh, one of his attributes is also clearing everything which is unserving uh, to you, to the collective, uh, basically the same. Um, and he helps us with that, uh, aligning ourselves to our Christ consciousness and uh, um, living and breathing and uh, uh, being this Christ consciousness in this reality uh, is one of uh, the things he can really help with. And I think about a week ago, I was on a walk with uh, a friend of mine and I was guided to this place. I've never been here before and I knew in advance this is going to be a day uh, with Manana Maclear. I felt his presence. Uh, very often before I go out for a walk, I tune in. Where should we go? What should we do? Stuff like that. And he guided me to a place uh, not so far from my home. And uh, we went there. We set out for a walk. 
and I told this friend of mine, um, I feel a very strong draw, uh, draw to a specific place in the salt marshes here off the coast. And um, we walked uh, to that point uh, I felt guided to, and there was this big uh, uh, ring of dirt in the uh, ground. It was man-made, it's not very old, it's uh, uh, fairly recent. Uh, but it's circle shaped with one entrance, so it looks like a really old uh, temple or sacred site uh, uh, from thousands of years ago. And I uh, stood in the center of this circle and then I heard his voice again. This is my temple, he said. And I got this big surge of energy. And uh, I, I was quite in awe. And when you feel this energy, it's really invigorating and it, it heightens every part of your aspect it's like you're being infused with with light energy and my frequency raised my frenzy uh, frequency as well and that of the place and I started seeing a temple in the uh, ethereal realm around us and, and, and it was very clear that this was Mananam McLear who gave you yes that. yes uh, uh, his energy uh, uh, I recognize him by his energy uh, very often I get hot flashes uh, uh, when he's near. Uh, seagulls uh, uh, are messages of him, so they also come and um, introduce him uh, when something needs to be done. And uh, that was the case too on this day. But then my head started thinking, yeah, well, okay, this is your temple, but uh, how about, uh, uh, what would the owners of this land feel about this? And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, my head started to think about the more practical and uh, down-to-earth uh, uh, matters of the situation. So and he who, was, um, who owns this land? It's, uh, uh, um, uh, in Dutch it's called uh, the Warrenvereniging. It's a, a beautiful organization which dedicates themselves to the protection of the uh, Warrensee. All wildlife, plant life. And, uh, uh -huh. and this is right along the coast there. Yes. And they own a pretty significant <clears throat> amount of land or they manage a really large tracts of land there? Um, they do not really own a lot of land there. They uh, do have a specific spot, which was this spot uh, uh, where they have a bird viewing uh, a little building and stuff like that and uh, information panels about who they are and what they're doing. and. Uh, the land around there is uh, actually owned by another organization, also a natural protection organization. Okay. Um, but Marana McLear was not so, uh, uh, how do you say this? Uh, concerned? Concerned about this. No, it was like, this is my temple, uh, period. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> decision, decision made, yes. it's going to happen. His literal, his literal words were, uh, I claim this spot. <laughs> wow. So that was, uh, uh, there was no question about that. And I asked him, should I maybe write those organizations? And he was up for that. He thought it was a good idea. Uh, uh, so I wrote a letter. I posted it yesterday to that organization about my experiences at his temple. This is so amazing, Cornelius. Did you tell them? You, so you told them about Manana McLear communicating with you and requesting yes. it? So are they going to think you are completely crazy? <laughs> uh, that's a possibility, of course. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but then again, I know that when the spirit realm really wants something to manifest, that they will support it. Mm. You know, there are things they can do from those realms which are not so easy for us to do in the physical realms. Exactly. So if it's meant to be, it, it's meant to be. But I just, I'm just in awe that you wrote a letter about Man and McLear communicating with you and asking for a temple there, stating. Well, it this is it was a little out of my comfort zone. Uh, so, uh, but uh, Man and McLear thought it was a good idea, <laughs> uh, and my heart said yes as well. So, yeah, what are you going to do then? Uh, then uh, <laughs> you have to follow that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, also because he really wants this uh, place to be uh, put on a map, literally, so people can find this place. Um, he was re really specific about it. He doesn't need a big building there or a temple. It can stay exactly as it is now because uh, it is energetically um, 
you could say hardwired to his uh, presence and there's a big channel of light uh, uh, coming from the cosmos to that place and it's really grounding high frequencies so in, it doesn't this. it doesn't need to be a physical building no it, uh, he says ah. the, the place is perfect as it is oh i was wondering about that okay Okay. And I, I think uh, those organizations' goals and his goals uh, uh, really align because they have a similar agenda: uh, preserving the natural order, the natural state of things. Mm -hmm. um, he likes people to come there and visit, uh, bring offerings like flowers uh, or, or such, and uh, connect to him. And um, um, and you'll yeah, be the you'll be the caretaker of this temple then. Well, it's really close by, so I'm gonna visit a lot, and I also uh, feel I, I, I'm gonna go there to uh, clean the spot up if necessary. Uh huh. So you were talking about the column of light. I interrupted you. Please, please say more. Yes, uh, this is one of the things uh, um, the temple is gonna help with. Um, he talked about, uh, you know, this meditation of mine being a channel of light. Uh, Malana Maglia said, I can really help you guys, uh, referring to all people who are open to this, uh, to activate uh, this channel of yours. And he can strengthen it and empower it, uh, which basically results in uh, being able to uh, manifest more of the higher consciousness of your own higher consciousness into this reality. Hmm. Did you want to lead us through that meditation while we're recording here right now, or? Uh, I asked him about it because I uh, have actually written a meditation about this. Uh, he told me uh, you can keep it really simple. Uh, so uh, he specifically, uh, again, he's all, all, always really, really clear about things. Don't do the meditation. Just keep it really simple and tell people what to do. And before I want to do that, I would like to talk about his, uh, uh, you could say his children, but in this uh, situation, they are also his helpers, which are beings from the sea, like uh, here behind me, uh, the sea elves. And this is a painting made by my husband. He Beautiful. painted this uh, sea elves and um, they are uh, ex exquisite, extraordinary beings, and they are so pure hearted, and they actually live always in perfect alignment with the truest, truest self, with their uh, who they really, truly are. And uh, in this manner, they are also great teachers to us. And uh, melanin clears energy can be really intense. It can be really overwhelming. Uh, I told you this before we started recording. Hey, this was a uh, a bit of a challenging day because it's really uh, present here uh, for several hours now. So I asked Mother Gaia to help me stay grounded, which was a, a, a big help because you need to stay grounded as well. And um, Mananal suggested if people have trouble with these high uh, energies or uh, grounding them into this reality, into, the, into your current state of being, um, ask uh, uh, my companions for help. And the sea elves are uh, uh, one of those helpers. It can also be mermaids, it can also be air spirits. Uh, he suggests to keep it open, ask for a helper and then just see, feel, whoever or whatever uh, comes through within this uh, sacred space of perfect alignment. Mm. And that's how the sea elves came in. And they're really present at his temple as well. Interesting. Very, very. So they're, they're around you right now then, I assume, too. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And um, my husband experienced it during the painting of these beings. And I experienced it uh, in, in other manners. <laughs> um, they can be sometimes uh, be a little bit tricky to connect with. And it's not because they don't want to but uh, uh, they sometimes have trouble with our human uh, energetical state because we carry a lot of <laughs> stuff around. Density. Uh, density, yes, and pain and hurt. And um, 
it's not like they can't cope with it, but they have a trouble uh, reaching us because it means we are in a different vibrational state. So uh, for them to fully be able to help us, and there's a little bit of a conundrum in this, uh, they really uh, invite us to uh, uh, work on your light body, work on your uh, crystalline body. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, speak out intentions. I am aligned with the highest, highest good. I am aligned with my Christ consciousness, uh, stuff like that. And uh, really feel this and let it sink into your body and make it, make mm -hmm. it here, make it now. And um, you, by doing so, you you are actually raising your body and all your bodies into this higher state of being, um, making it easier for them to connect with you. And they literally can take you by the hand uh, into this new way of being. Because uh, for us, uh, it is a new way of being. We uh, haven't been used to this for a very, very long time. So it's good to have some companions on this road. And the sea elves, you can call on them regardless of wherever you are all over the world, right? Yes. Huh. And, you know, I would love, Cornelius, if you're open for you to define the Christ consciousness, how you understand it, if you're okay with that. Um. For, uh, for me, it actually feels like me and uh, the person, the being you are experiencing on this plane, on this planet Earth, it's like um, a little piece of it uh, running around the planet, uh, learning stuff, doing stuff, clearing stuff, but it's um, like an avatar, but the Christ consciousness, that is more who you really are than uh, it's not like this is not you but um, it's a bigger me uh, a, a more evolved me your higher self yes the higher self and um, <clears throat> by higher I don't mean away from you or it's like somewhere up there or anything um, um, it's something you can open up to when you quiet down your mind uh -huh. and just sit, it's a lot like a Buddha's teachings, be quiet, be still, open up yourself. So you make room, you make space for this being. And how do you see, because different people define it kind of differently and it is connected with the consciousness that Christ, when Christ walked the planet. Yes, he was an he, example in that way. He was living Which, or, in that place of mm. his higher self yes okay okay great cool and i'm very optimistic about the future because i think this is something uh inevitable we are all gonna live from that state of being no matter what and uh, the world may seem a bit chaotic now <laughs> <laughs> putting it mildly <laughs> i love how optimistic you are about the future we need to help more people be optimistic hmm. yes and so uh, connecting you, go ahead no. um i often compare the current situation with uh, with growing pains so uh it's a bit uh uh uncomfortable but we're gonna get through it and uh, um, I really believe uh, if more people open up to this way of being, uh, to this consciousness, consciousness, because uh, it's it's here for all of us. It's only get, gonna get easier and it's gonna get brighter and, and more beautiful. We're literally manifesting he heaven on the earth. Mm, I love the way you describe that. And the sea elves obviously want us to do this because it will yes. help us connect with them far more clearly. Yes. Which will support Mananamakli. It will support Mother Gaia and the whole birthing of the new yes. earth. Yeah. Mananamakli yeah. has so many tools and gifts uh, he can uh, uh, assist us with. But we need to say yes. We need to open ourselves up and uh, connect. And uh, this temple is uh, going to help with that. Uh -huh. Great. Well, is there anything else you want to share about this temple in Mananamak Lear? Well, if you're not living nearby, uh, you, you can still do it. Eh? Even if you're in the USA or in Australia or anywhere. Uh, uh, the, the temple is a great place. It's going to help us with that. But uh, uh, 
uh, uh, don't feel uh, uh, disconnected because there is no disconnection ever. So wherever you are, uh, you can tune into this energy. And Marana Maglir, um, she can really help you uh, uh, with this uh, realigning and this clearing of yourself. Uh, as he stated it, he says, I'm going to help you be completely free of manipulation and infiltration so you can be a truest self on this earth. And how do you call on man and I'm make clear? It sounds like in your case, he just shows up <laughs> because yes. you already have this rapport with him. But how do um, you recommend that somebody else who doesn't have that initial connection with him? Um, well, some, uh, also sometimes I just ask him uh, 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 when I'm doing a ritual, a ceremony, uh, and he's really clear about when he wants to help or when he doesn't feel the need to do so because he only works from the highest good and mm -hmm. he only works for your uh, 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 most perfect situation. So if he is not the right uh, uh, deity for you at that moment, it, it's not a rejection. Uh, the way he communicates, sometimes it may feel so because he just says no. <laughs> he doesn't mince his words. <laughs> he doesn't mince his words, no, indeed. <laughs> uh. Uh, uh, but it's not uh, like he's rejecting you. It just means uh, he's not the right uh, deity for you at that time, at that moment in time. And um, he can also uh, uh, say yes, of course, especially when you're working on your alignment. Uh, he's really, he, he really coming forward for people uh, uh, to assist uh, with this uh, particular situation. And uh, I would ask him or I would call upon, I'm calling upon Malana Maglir. And um, uh, be open, again, be still, uh, feel what's happening. And it's not always through your mind. It's not always uh, vocal. Maybe you, you, you're you getting energy surges through your body and uh, not just listen to your mind, but also to your body because your body always knows the truth. Mm, especially your heart. Yes. Okay, great. Well, is there anything else you wanted to share about this amazing project that he's given you? Uh, yeah, um, well, uh, that his temple is here right now on the Frisian coast is uh, also no coincidence. Um, he talked to me about the ancient Frisian shamans, or he, uh, uh, he prefers to refer to them as wizards. So, of course, there's no coincidence there as well. He says, I'm a Frisian god too, uh, but I'm... Uh, but people have forgotten about me on these shores. Uh, in Ireland, on the Isle of Man, and other locations, people still remember him, people still know of him. And he feels uh, it is important uh, for him to be remembered again on the Frisian coast because he's part of our ancient heritage. Mm. And those Frisian wi uh, wizards from very, very long ago, um, they worked directly in connection uh, in communication with source uh, and um, they didn't have any tools they didn't have uh, drums or stuff like that they just connected from within uh, with their highest uh, selves and uh, it's really um, simple it's really uh, basic um, and therefore, it's also really, uh, uh, can be really powerful. There's a, a, a one thing, you constantly has, have to be aware of yourself. Uh, who am I speaking to? Uh, who am I? Uh, come, uh, is this coming from a place of love? Or is this coming from a place of pain? Because it can also be your own trauma talking, uh, basically uh, misleading you. Uh, mm -hmm. So is the message clear or is it unclear? And um, in this uh, sense, it, it, it basically is becoming a way of life to be your truest self in every situation, in every aspect of your being. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> and he, he wants to support us with this. He wants to support us with this. And in order for him to be supportive, people need to know of him. People need to know who he is. Uh -huh. And... Um, um, remembering this on our shores uh, 
uh, will resonate with uh, slumbering things in your DNA, slumbering stuff. Uh, dormant, dormant. Dormant stuff, yeah. yes. So he is helping us uh, awaken more. And you have a, aren't you working on a book about him, with him? Yes, yes. And that's going to be coming out sometime soon or? Uh, I'm almost halfway done with this book. Uh, after that, I felt I could need a break because it's, it's really intense. And Manon McLear was okay with this because uh, when I uh, feel these sort of things, I uh, obviously also ask, is this in perfect alignment? Is this supposed to happen? Is this good? Uh, and he was okay with it uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, make a little break, uh, uh, have a little break. Sure. Uh, uh, a lot of other stuff uh, came forward uh, when I was having this break. So uh, apparently this break was necessary for this other stuff to reappear. And um, I, my, my, my sense is sometime in the fall, I will start writing again. I'm not okay. really sure. I've asked him several times and uh, uh, is this the time to start writing with your book again? Uh, I think I asked him about three or four times, and uh, all those times the answer was no. <laughs> so, so I let it go. Yeah, again. you're very well guided. So, mm. but stay tuned, those who are watching this video that Cornelis is putting out. It will be in Dutch, but hopefully translated into English sometime shortly after that. <laughs> More I on hope your plate. So. Yes. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else you want to share about the Nana McLear and the CLs and the temple I'm, I'm, uh, uh, right now um, it's like I'm uh, viewing behind this uh, uh, fog screen uh, behind this screen there are uh, uh, many 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 sea elves and they are uh, celebrating and um, this is a message from the sea elves um, um, for the people who are interested in connecting with them, they are beings of pure joy, pure love. And um, to connect with them is to connect with pure joy and pure love within yourself. So it would be appropriate to, for instance, uh, celebrate if you want to connect with them. Uh, 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 do it from a place of love. And if you're having trouble with collecting, Think of things uh, you really love. It can be a pet, it can be your husband, it can be anything. Think of things of love, uh, creating this energy of love around you. And they're really drawn to that. They're really passionate. They can be, uh, and I can relate to that. I can sometimes stop in the middle of a conversation because I see this beautiful, beautiful flower and I totally forget about the person next to me and I'm <laughs> <laughs> overwhelmed with the beauty of this flower. I love it. It's, it's a bit uh, uh, like your inner child. And, uh -huh, um, uh -huh. This is the energy. This is the flow they're, they're flowing. Yes. And they must work very closely with the dolphins then because the dolphins yes. are all about joy. Yes, yes. They play with dolphins a lot. They ride the dolphins like we sometimes ride horses. Wow. Uh, and uh, that too uh, happens in a playful manner, uh, yes. And the sea elves are all over the planet too, aren't they? Yes, and they have cities uh, at the bottoms of, uh, uh, of the ocean, beautiful, beautiful cities wow. with towers and palaces and, and covered in pearl and diamond and very shiny. <laughs> now, I remember asking you this, are they the same as the Undines, the U-N-D-I-N-E-S? A lot of people refer to the water spirits in the oceans as undines. Um, I'm getting, I, I don't know how to interpret it. It's, it's like a semi, yes. So uh, they're sort of under that category or that yes. thing. But there are yes. other beings that people call undines that are not sea elves. True. Okay, all right, all right. Beautiful. Well, thank you. I feel their energy. Just as you were talking about them, I felt them come in. I was starting to get chilly bumps up and down my leg. It was beautiful. Um, great. Well, anything else you want to share? They want to share through you. I'm getting a thank you. Aww. So I think that's, uh, that's the conclusion. <laughs> well, we say thank you to them. Mm -hmm. I think we just... And thank you, Cornelis. I hope this is still recording because we just got a little funky connection there. Mm. Thank you. 
and your mission in serving Manon McLear. <laughs> Thank you. All too. right.